Phoenix investors, I know a lot of you guys are looking at Cleveland with those out-of-state eyes, and you're like, how are prices this cheap? Let's talk about it. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to another episode of the MLS Search and Analysis Show. I'm James Wise. This is Holton Wise TV. I'm talking to people from Phoenix today because the clients I'm working with, Larry and Tammy, you're a husband-wife team from Phoenix, and you came to the Cleveland market because in the Cleveland market, your money can be stretched much further than it can in Phoenix, right? And um, a lot of people are in that same boat. You see the price points we have in Cleveland, and you're like, whoa, dude, we could never, ever get a property like that here in Phoenix. It must be amazing. And then sometimes the answer is maybe, maybe not, right? Like the property we're going to be looking at in a little bit here, it looks like it's a freaking screamer, right? You got to be like, whoa, I can't believe you could buy a five-unit apartment building uh, for that price. And in reality, I don't think it's a bad deal, uh, but it's not like this insane deal, right? People from out of state look at it, and they think it's an insane deal at, at first glance, but it, it's really just like an average deal. And that's really the value add that Holton Wise has, right? So if you're an investor out there and you're watching, right, you're watching this later, right? I sent this to to Larry and Tammy privately, okay? You could work with me in real time, and then only after the deals are no longer available do I release them publicly for everyone to see on Holton Wise TV, right? But that's what we do. We will break things down for you guys in the most honest and transparent way possible so you get to understand uh, exactly what it is you're buying, right? It's not like a traditional turnkey outfit where we just try to push, 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 right? We're really in the due diligence business, right? We're, we're helping you with your upfront due diligence and then providing you that boots on the ground team after that. So that's something you like when you see me analyze this property and you're interested and you want to work with me like Larry and Tammy, shoot me an email, sales at holtonwise.com. Give us your number. We'll call you. We'll talk to you about your goals, what you're trying to accomplish, and then we'll set you up on some videos just like this. Now, what we're going to do now Quick commercial break, and then we're getting into the property. Hey lenders, our investors are looking to work with you. Send us an email at sales at holtonwise.com. Welcome back. Let's jump right into this property. Now, this is pretty cool uh, because I think it is priced right, but I do have uh, some issues and some reservations with the listing itself. Now, does that mean that it's not a good deal? No, but I just want to make sure we're on the same page, okay? 3495 West 98th, Cleveland, 44102. Just hit the market, three days on the market, priced at 139900 Now, you might be looking at this like, holy crap, dude! A freaking five unit for 139900 This thing is out of this world, craziest deal in the world. No. I don't think it's the, the craziest, most amazing deal in the world. I don't necessarily think it's a horrible deal. I think the price point you have to pay will be that one thirty nine nine, And I feel like the property in its current uh, situation is, is probably worth one hundred thirty nine nine. I think that's a pretty reasonable uh, deal for both the seller and the buyer. Now, you take a property like this, the neighborhood, it's like, you know, a high D, low C grade neighborhood. We have freaking hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of units in this particular neighborhood, right? This is a neighborhood where, uh, you know, I prefer to go with the Section 8 tenants, right? I feel like the rents, you know, they typically get pushed a little higher that way because you have a much wider uh, tenant base, number one. Number two, this is a type of area where, yeah, these folks are manageable, but, you know, they're just like one, you know, poor life uh, situation or circumstance away from missing your rent payment, right? And trying to evict motherfuckers in the day and age of fucking COVID and the CARES Act and all that some fucking shit. It's a bitch, man. So, you know, you want to go Section 8. Now, as far as, like, getting this to market rent, if you had all five of these units rented at market rate, 
this building would probably be a two hundred thousand dollar building right now and I, I know people are probably like well it's it only two hundred thousand because like he, the rents are going to be high right as far as what the rents would look like we're looking at three thousand three hundred fifty for the long haul that's forty thousand two hundred right for the year right you got three two ones market rent 750 a one one at six and a studio at five right so you might be thinking like dude at a five unit with those kind of rents why is it only gonna be worth like 200 dude like you probably get similar uh for a four unit and that's true you would right i don't really necessarily think this particular property having that fifth unit is going to add any real value because your your price per unit on a, a five unit is going to be lower than your price per unit on a four unit, right? Reason being is the financing on a five unit, it's all fucked up, okay? It's, it's terrible, right? A four unit is the best property in the world to finance. Why? Because it's the biggest property that falls under 30-year traditional residential financing, right? 30-year, fixed interest, low interest, tax deductible, right? The most units you can have to qualify for that loan is four. After four, you got to go to commercial financing. What do you think the worst type of commercial asset there is for a commercial lender? This motherfucker right here. It's a low-cost five-unit building, right? Once you get into commercial financing, it's, you know, big apartment buildings. 10, 12, 30, 40, 50, 100, 200, 400 units, right? This is a building that... It is not desirable in the portfolio of a commercial lender, right? And as far as how it's being operated, right? Because once you're in the commercial space, guys, you have to uh, get financing differently, right? It's based upon the previous rent rolls and how the building was operated. And, and they look at the debt service coverage ratio. Totally different ballgame than when you're looking at the four units, right? That's just based on your income, your credit, right? The people that own five-unit apartment buildings are not typically your professional uh, landlords. So they don't keep good records. You're not going to get all that information and data that you're hoping or that your lender is hoping. So you're really just like chasing your tail in this big circle. Like the the honest to God's truth, the way this deal gets done is, is with a friggin' cash offer. Because like this particular dude is clearly not a professional, right? Like first of all, he hired a realtor. It's on the MLS, but it's a, it's just like a flat fee realtor. You just pay them a few hundred bucks, they put your property on the MLS, and then you just deal with the seller directly, right? And as far as the info we have, right, this is what they said. Nice, large, brick, five-sweeter. Great value-add opportunity. Three two-bedroom units, one one-bedroom, one efficiency, private off-street parking. Two units currently rented with long-term tenants collecting eight twenty-five a month. Three units need renovation. Tenants pay utilities. Newer hot water tank. Roof needs attention. No active leaks. Current property managers are willing to stay. Landlord pays water and sewer $125 per month. First of all, the, the, the big thing, right? So we only have two units collecting rent, and it, it's way below market, right? Just like $825 is coming in. So you have like no current rent roll to impress a, a, a commercial uh, lender, right? So there's that issue, right? Now, as far as the units needing renovation, right, we don't really have like – a lot of info on that, right? We got some photos of the outside, and then you just see that's it. Like the electric panel and like one little shot of a dining room, right? It's clearly some like old carpet, right? So I would assume like a full cosmetic reno on those three units, you know, it could be like 10K. It could be, uh, you know, it could be 10K, could not be 10K. I'm not really 100% sure exactly what it's going to be. You'll have to figure that out uh, when you get in there and do the inspection, right? I mean, if they're just dating and you're doing full cosmetics, I mean, yeah, five, ten thousand dollars a unit, but like what if one is like totally wrecked or totally trashed, right? It's info that they haven't made available to us, right? They're completely vacant units. Why did they not get the pictures, right? That you know, that's that's something to concern yourself with, right? In addition to that, right, another problem I have with this is uh they're saying that the landlord pays $125 per month uh, for the whole building. Well, yeah, probably, right? Because there's like two fucking tenants in there. But that doesn't make any goddamn sense if it's a fucking five-unit apartment building. The way my numbers would pan out, right? Thirty-three fifty comes in a month. Forty thousand two hundred comes in a year. Your fixed and variable expenses are going to be over twenty thousand for the year, right? Because I think you're paying for your water and sewer almost four hundred dollars a month. I think you're paying three seventy-five. And if you pick the thing up 
at the price though, right? The the current price, the 139.9, it would be a 14.4 cap over the long haul, which looks amazing. Which is again what I said it to be, uh, you know, which is what I said, right? Like earlier, like you might see this and like be like, dude, 139.9. For a five unit, this must be the greatest deal ever, right? And, like, over the long haul, the numbers pan out to where it looks really good. But we have to dig deeper. There's a lot of unknown information. How much are the units going to cost, right? They're probably going to be at least 10K a unit, but I don't know. They said the roof needs attention. Now, this is like a, a flat roof, okay? You take a big flat roof building like this. The way that these roofs are done is different than like what these are done right these right here are your normal uh shingle roofs okay these usually last about 30 years these are probably seven seven thousand dollar roofs okay this is a flat rubber roof and it's probably original to the building the way it works is it's like a flat roof and then throughout the years like every five ten years people just like add layer and layer and layer and layer and layer and layer uh, of like additional roofing right to make sure there's no leaks right you take care of it but what happens is when you get uh to a, a level where uh the roof uh, is no longer able to take on new layers because it's just too heavy for the structure. You have to go in and cut it down and, and totally remove the whole thing and start over. That could be like a $30,000 job, maybe $40,000 job, right? So it's possible the building has a uh, worst case scenario, like $70,000 of repairs that it needs. Uh, but maybe the roof's not in that bad of shape. Maybe you can uh have several more years of like tarring it up i don't really know that and the information we're getting uh is not going to be uh very good or accurate right doesn't look like this person's too involved i mean as a matter of fact they put this thing on the uh, the mls as a four unit right there's like a whole different section of the mls right the way the mls is broken up it's like single families are in one section two to four units are in another and then your five units plus is like a whole separate section they didn't even put the building in the right section right so uh they don't have the the exact rents we don't have pictures of these vacant units so don't think that this is like a building you're going to get this beautiful like bow package of like here's all your info we have to dig deeper and we have to go in and do the inspections and figure all that out we got to put together a budget for what the rentals are going to be for the units we got to put together a budget uh for what the roof is going to be so with all that said right yeah fully operational yeah, it's probably a two hundred thousand dollar building. Could have been worth more if financing wasn't going to be so jacked up, right? But it's definitely a two hundred thousand dollar building, uh, ready to rock and roll. Right now at one hundred and forty, you're like, oh, dude, you know, sixty G's less than what it could be worth. It must be a screamer. Eh, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Like I said, I think it's probably worth one hundred thirty nine right now because I think somebody's going to buy it. The demand in Cleveland is redunculous, right? People are buying these things like crazy, and you're going to get a lot of people that are going to see a five unit. Uh, and see the fact that you could bring in 40 G's in rent, and it's a pretty reasonable neighborhood, and they're gonna they're gonna want to make a stab. So if you do want to buy it, it's gonna be 139.9. I bet that's what you have to pay, but uh, you know it'll probably pan out to be like an average deal. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.